Is your Ridgeback causing you all sorts of anxiety because they are being aggressive to every dog they meet? Let's see if we can help with that. Welcome back to the Fenrir Ridgeback Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the wonderful Ridgeback and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own Ridgeback. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload right here. Having an aggressive Ridgeback can be really worrying, especially when they're being aggressive to other dogs so you can't go out on a walk or even leave the home at fear that they're going to bite another dog. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the CEO and founder of FenrirK9Leaders.com, Will, has recorded all about dogs being aggressive to other dogs. So if this is an issue you're having, why don't you grab a notebook and a pen and start to write down some notes as he goes through some really useful training tips. So here we are guys into my quick fire breakdown of the problem around dog to dog aggression or dog to dog reactivity which is my bread and butter in the area that I found myself most successful at and most in demand for especially with large powerful guarding breeds so it is something that I feel very uh, able to speak at length about but it is one of those things I could do multiple day seminars on this specific subject so I'm going to try my best to condense it down to one of these quick fire webinars so that you can pull out as much information as possible whether you're struggling with your dog or whether you're watching this because you're wanting to get into the profession and helping other owners who are struggling with this problem so dog to dog reactivity or dog to dog aggression is one of those things that is the micro behavior that we're seeing and a lot of the times it is for many owners a terrifying behavior and it stops the owners wanting to get out with their dogs because they're terrified of what happens if they see another dog it's incredibly embarrassing but then what happens is that then that dog isn't getting as much exercise which then only further perpetuates the problem because they're not getting as much exercise nor are they being able to positively socialize around other dogs and the problem gets gets worse and worse and people go in a vicious spiral till they get to a point where sometimes they give up on the dog and then the dog gets euthanized as an aggressive dog. Now the root cause behind reactivity or aggression is so varying and wide which is why we could do multiple day seminars on this topic so we're not going to go into the root cause but what we're going to do is regardless of the root cause nine out of ten of those root causes would go through a similar behavior modification or rehabilitation program and that's more what I want to give you an overview of in this webinar so we've got a dog that's reactive towards other dogs in particular or we've got a dog who is genuinely aggressive now most people will always read it as aggression whereas the vast majority of the time it's more reactivity than it is aggression and that reactivity doesn't come from a place of dominance it actually comes from a place of anxiety anxiety is made far worse by a dog that has a ton of pent-up energy it makes them further anxious and then these reactive outbursts of behavior then become worse so the answer isn't only more exercise but more exercise is a huge part of any behavior modification or rehabilitation program that we want to utilize for reaction or aggressive based dog to dog problems so you might have to get creative if you are timid of going out and you might see other dogs so it might be finding a secure location I know around here in the Midlands there's a few areas where you can pay and go to a, a couple of acre plot where you, it's completely fenced in you pay six or seven quid for an hour and your dog can be fully off leads with complete safety so that could be an option this could be an option that you recommend to your clients but exercise that dog significantly more so that we can start off by burning off some of that additional energy which instantly will help us with the anxiety if we can burn off that energy then what we're about to move into with our more detailed behavior modification and rehabilitation program is far easier so I always like to start here by finding a way whatever that way is because it is mandatory to this problem of exercising that dog significantly more to make them as tired as possible before we start to try and rehabilitate the behavior of aggression or reactivity hey guys very quickly i just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before it's the program that as a canine behaviorist i use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that i work with to high levels of success it is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you 
as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. Which then moves on to what is usually the hard part of this process, and it is the process that a lot of owners may struggle to hear. So again, if you are working in this as a profession, you have to get that finesse and the people skills of being able to, quite frankly, let the owner know that it is completely their fault and they are to blame and it's them that needs to change long before the dog needs to change. Now, you can get into quite fiery situations with that if you're not careful. So again, a bit of finesse, a bit of people skills, a bit of practice and experience in being able to get that point across to the owner but getting them to embrace that as a positive thing to be able to be the solution you could come in and instantly have an excellent relationship with the dog just because of your natural way and inclination with dogs and fix the problem in front of their eyes you get in your car and go home but because that relationship is still broken with the owner they still have the same problem and that's no use it makes you look amazing but it doesn't actually help solve the problem when we're all about solving the root cause when we're working here at Fenrir that's what we do we don't put plasters on anything we get down to the root cause and if you're doing that with your dog brilliant and if you want to work in this as a profession that is what you should be aspiring to be doing as well so we structure the relationship. Now, we use our bootcamp process. There is a link in the description box below if you're interested in our online version of that. But that is a one month program that is designed and I have now implemented thousands of times to be able to help people restructure that relationship. It's nice because it is very much a procedure that you go, the dog goes through, but it's actually equally as much designed about educating the owner on what it takes to become a high level canine leader, help educate them on where they might have been going wrong they don't mean to go wrong it's just simply a lack of education on their part but it allows them to learn where they've gone wrong learn how to not do those same mistakes in the future how to become a high level leader they go through that process with the dog, which allows to restructure the relationship with the dog for the dog to finally be able to relax, let go and go, ah, awesome. I see, I get it, you're in charge. And then once that dog makes that switch, you can see it in front of your eyes. I've got goosebumps. It's the most beautiful part of working with these cases is when you physically see in front of your eyes that anxiety, that burden of responsibility just wash away from a dog when they're finally able to let go and trust in their owner as their calm consistent leader that a lot of the time helps address these kind of issues because the root cause of the issue is anxiety the anxiety stems from that dog not having a calm consistent leader who it can look to for guidance and direction when they get that kind of leadership in their life the anxiety disappears and they simply trust in their leader so then we have to go through that process so we're applying much more exercise we then put emphasis solely on restructuring that relationship then when we've restructured the relationship we can now finally look at addressing the problem behavior at the micro level because what you'll find is that eight times out of ten focusing on those higher macro level problem solving skills like exercise and restructuring the relationship and better leadership on the owner's part will address the micro behavior in terms of reactivity now reactivity is one of those usually i say nine times out of ten it's all reactivity aggression eight because it can become a very established and ingrained habit in the dog to react that way so once we've broke down that relationship and refixed it to get to the point where the dog looks to you for guidance and direction doesn't mean that that habit isn't still ingrained what we now need to be able to do is utilize that relationship which now gives us that clear communication pathway between the owner and the dog and we use that communication pathway to be able to say, no, nope, this isn't how we act anymore. This is how I want you to act. And then that is where we get into the more juicy bits of the actual behavior modification program which then does take us to rehabilitating the problem behavior and we go through my common process of correct redirect reinforce now far too many people try to jump to this as the quick fix and yes there is lots of examples of what i call death row dogs in terms of right this dog is going to get put down today if we don't address this problem today in that kind of scenario it's like right we need to go in probably with a prong collar and we need to correct this behavior quickly or this dog is going to die now that can be done and then sometimes we have to flip it where we have to show a lot of progress very quickly to say look this it can be done 
look, look what we've achieved in an hour. Now we're going to go back and restructure the relationship and add more exercise. Now, if we've got the time, it's better to do it the other way. More exercise, restructure the relationship, and then go in with correcting and redirecting because it means that we need far less correction. You should always only use the minimum amount of correction required to achieve the desired response, which is stop doing what you're doing because I now want to tell you what you should do. And if you do that instead, I'm going to reward you. Correct, redirect, reinforce. That's what that process means. Now, if we've got a, de a death row case and that dog is red zone, aggressive, reactive towards another dog, I may have to go in with a very heavy handed correction to be able to snap them out of it to then redirect them to a heel position or a sit and stay to then reinforce that. But I would rather not do it. I would rather simply use a verbal correction or a simple little collar pop with a, a slip lead that causes no issue whatsoever. And it's just that more physical, hey, hey buddy, stop doing that please, I need you to do this. And if we can restructure that relationship and that communication, we get that moment where it's, oh yeah, sorry boss, got carried away with myself then, what is it you need? Rather than them red mist, red zone, losing their minds. So that is all we're gonna do. We're gonna utilize a heel command. So if they don't know heel, we're gonna strip it back and we're gonna teach heel as an obedience trick in a very positive way. Or we can use a simple sit and stay based approach. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna to start to drill it. If the dog shows any kind of reactive, aggressive behavior, we're gonna try and use excellent timing and catch it just before it's about to start. We don't wanna be late. We don't wanna let the dog really start to explode. But the second those heckles come up, that chest comes up, those ears pop up, we go, nope. So if we're able to use a low level correction, it can be simple as, ah, ah, oh, yep, sorry, what was it, boss? Sit, stay. So we've redirected them, they're sitting and staying. They can look at the dog, okay, that's all right, we'll work on that, you can f be focused on it. But as long as you're not losing your mind and being reactive, then I'm gonna give you some food reward. We can give you some praise, the reinforcement, whatever works for the dog, we can utilize. And then as we get better, we can start looking for that eye contact, even when there's dogs around, to really keep the focus on us to then allow us to really be able to actually reprogram and restructure this very, very common problem. So again, correct the behavior, redirect to the desired one, and then reinforce that behavior. That is how we address problem reactivity and aggression. Like I say, it is very complicated. It is something we could talk about at length, but I wanna keep these as quick fire, quick snappy webinars. I hope you found that really, really useful, guys. You can start putting those training tips into practice straight away with your Ridgeback. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear all about how your training is going. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Ridgeback Show.